Hello and welcome to another episode of Useless Information. My name is Daryl Woods down here in the lower left hand corner. Working at Belt Services at Hollywood St. Paul's and today we're going to be talking about Christmas music. Just random facts about Christmas music. So everyone's familiar with rocking around the Christmas tree and that um, kind of rather mature voice that she has came from a Brenda Lee who was only 13 years old when she recorded this song in 1958. Jingle Bells was written to be a song celebrating Thanksgiving. Meanwhile, Joy to the World was meant to be a song celebrating Easter and Auld Lang Syne wasn't meant to be associated with any holiday whatsoever. So Guy Lombardo had his orchestra that used to play with the, the dropping of the ball in Times Square. And um, one year it was televised nationally, it was on the radio nationally. And after the ball had dropped and um, everybody was kind of wrapping up, they, say, they played the song Auld Lang Syne to kind of indicate, yeah, the, roll the credits, we're all done here. And um, apparently that was so popular that he did it again the next year and then every year following and it just kind of came to be associated with something that you did on uh, the stroke of midnight on New Year's. The guy who sang You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, one thing he's got a really cool name, Thurl Ravenscroft. You wonder if that uh, is his actual name or if he chose his like a stage name to go along with his uh, very cool voice but anyway, he was also the voice of Tony the Tiger. The only Christmas song that ever topped Billboard's Hot 100 is the Chipmunk song. And as goofy as it is, this is one of the few Christmas songs that really uh, kind of cheers me up. I don't know why. Uh, I, find, I find it fun. So Eartha Kitt recorded a follow-up to her hit Santa Baby with a single called This Year's Santa Baby. Exact same song, changed some of the lyrics, and nobody was having it. Uh, absolutely, very few people fell for that and bought essentially the same song with different lyrics. So the New York Diocese of the Roman Catholic Church was very upset uh, with the song, I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, because they thought that it promoted adultery. And it actually took Jimmy Boyd, another 13-year-old who recorded a Christmas song, uh, to go before the board at the New York Diocese and explain the premise of the song to them before they finally went, oh, okay, I guess that's all right then. The number one best-selling song of all time across all genres is White Christmas by Bing Crosby. We'll see the song come up again here in a little bit. Another band that is uh, closely associated lately with uh, Christmas is the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. None of them are from Siberia. They're from Manhattan originally. The very first Christmas song to refer to Santa was up on the housetop. Before that, they were all about the birth of Jesus and uh, this song was written in 1864 by Benjamin Hanby. Compare that to Come, O Come, Emmanuel, where the lyrics were written around the 9th century, probably the oldest um, Christmas carol that we have. So I've got four guys up here and a list of some of the songs that they wrote. We've got Johnny Marks, who wrote Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Holly Jolly Christmas, Rock Around the Christmas Tree, uh, White Christmas, as I mentioned before, number one song of all time, written by Irving Berlin. Uh, Mel Torme wrote the Christmas song, and Let It Snow was written by Jewel Stein and Sammy Kahn. So other than composers of Christmas music, what do they have in common? Well, they are all of Jewish descent. Now, typically, uh, Jewish people don't celebrate Christmas, but apparently they do celebrate writing Christmas uh, music, and they do it quite well. And one thing I also think is worth pointing out here is that none of them are about the birth of Jesus Christ. It's all about just celebrating the Christmas season, which, why not? All right, so I got most of my information from these three sources here, and I want to send a special thanks 
to Maya, who did such a nice job, as she does every week, creating these slides and picking out the images for us. And if you enjoyed that, I think you'll also enjoy our virtual trivia night that happens every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Facebook. You can go to the URL that you see here, or you can go to Facebook and just type in virtual trivia night into the search bar, and you should be able to find us. I'm there almost every week, and I have a good time, and I'm sure you will also. So this has been Useless Information. I'd love to hear from you, so go ahead and place a comment down below, or you can email me directly at the email address that you see here. Love to hear comments, questions, suggestions, corrections, whatever you got. So until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.